Uh, so what I'm going to explain now is the process I have developed over the years for designing my educational content. This is the process I use to basically to design my lesson plans in my course, uh, to design, oh that was a good voice crack, to design my lessons on YouTube and all these sorts of things. And here's the kicker. I use the same process to design my lessons and educational content than what I use to build programs, to design programs. It's the same process just different content. So what do I mean by that? Uh, let me just uh, zoom in by physically moving this monitor closer to the whiteboard. And I'll knock a bunch of stuff off my desk as well. So how to, here's my basically a, a three-step process you can apply to design lessons or programs. And I'll talk about both since we're programmers and that's an easy analogy. Also going to do this WWE style holding the microphone, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so up on the whiteboard, I've drawn a triangle with some layers and it says low, medium, high. So what this indicates, what I'm pointing to is the amount of detail. So we can think of low as being low resolution, low detail, very abstract. Uh, we can think of high as being highly detailed, specific information. So the process I use to design lesson plans is I'll start by writing a list of topics that I want to cover, just the topics. So maybe I want to talk about uh, concurrency is a great example. So I'll, I'll just in notepad or whatever, just write down a list of topics or one topic. And that's the first step. What do I want to talk about? After that, I don't go straight to writing a verbal, wordy explanation. I don't go into the theory. The next step in the process is I ask myself, what is either a code example or a visual metaphor, uh, like the sidewalk picture or something like that, a, a simple example, which is at least related and partly describes the topic I'm trying to explain. Generally speaking, if we're talking about, uh, say, for example, in my Kotlin course, I'm going to prefer working with a code example. So I will make sure I write down my whole code example. So, for example, it could be something like uh, the example, the little code snippet I use to explain how testing basically works, something like that. And only when I have that figured out and I feel that it sufficiently describes the topic then I will move to verbal explanations. So this could be writing a script, so writing specific things I'm going to say about the topic. Generally speaking for me, uh, I kind of just write the main points and then I just let my brain ramble and sometimes I describe things well. Um, and that's kind of the process I use for designing my lesson plans. So start with less detail topics, figure out a relatable, hopefully, example which describes the topic, and then I write the words, the script, the article, whatever I'm going to talk about. And I find that is the best way to do it. What I used to do is I would maybe just start by trying to verbally explain the topic. And over time, I think you will find that it's actually better to start with less detail and gradually add detail over time. It turns out that this is exactly the same process I use to design applications. So we start with something very low detail, low resolution, very general, very abstract, such as either user stories or a problem statement. So I want my program to store workout data. So that could be a problem statement. From there, I'll move into contracts and interfaces. So when I say contracts and interfaces, I'm not actually talking specifically about uh, a, a language feature of Kotlin or Java. Uh, I mean just the publicly visible interfaces. So this could be just the publicly visible functions of a class. It could be an interface uh, designed by contract, code to an interface, maybe things you've heard before. 
And what this allows me to do is just like the sidewalk, it allows me to build things, different parts of my application in isolation of each other while still knowing the responsibilities of the contract between them. Once I've set up my contracts, then I'll move into the implementation, writing the actual code. And you'll find if you follow a software architecture and you apply test-driven development that you can end sort of agile type principles, then this process, while at first seeming like it might be extra work, actually allows you to build programs and solve problems faster than if you just started right with the implementation. I want to make a workout log app. Let's just start coding. Now, if you're a beginner and you need to just dive into writing code because you don't understand what a user story or a problem statement is or what a contract is or what an interface is, that's totally fine because ultimately you are practicing the skill of implementing your application. So to just briefly summarize uh, what I just said there for tip number three. So here is Ryan's process for designing educational content. So number one, make a list of topics or just one topic. Think of the simplest code example or visual example which sufficiently describes the concept you want to teach. Oops, teach. And then from there, add verbal details. So it could be explanations written or verbal. Add verbal, add uh, detail in the form of words, written or verbal, only after you have a concrete example. And I think if you follow this, you will have a much easier time designing uh, these sorts of things.